Are you ready to walk down a path of enchantment? Dilly Dallying in Dolly World takes you to a reality with beings ranging from angels to listeners, all sharing thoughts on divergent subjects from desserts to messages from beyond. Produced by Haggy Shack Radio's Colleen Kelly and broadcasting over the Wolf Spirit Radio Network. Dilly Dallying in Dolly World with Dolly Howard begins now. All righty, and we are live. Good uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Dolly? Yeah. Oh. Yes? Okay. I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear me? I hear you. I, Do you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I'm, you didn't hear me say the good morning stuff? Are first, you there? Yeah, I yeah. hear my darn headphones come unplugged. That's why I didn't hear you. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> why so everybody else heard me, but you didn't. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to live radio, folks. We love it. <laughs> so this is another Saturday. It's November the 5th, 2016. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> You're listening to live radio show, and they are simulcast by somehow HSR and WSR get simulcast. I don't understand the technicalities. Just trust me. And, and on each, ouch, ouch! Somebody's doing something bad. That's better. The noise went away. Um, so on each of the, on WSR and HSR pages, there's donate buttons. Please, uh, please go to the, their pages. If you go to HSR, that's Peggy Shack Radio, um, where if you donate $30 or more, um, Nancy provides you with Thirty dollars worth of S4 Shanghai stickers, so that's a really good deal. If you go to WSR, you're donating to JP's uh, end of it. Um, none of the producers or hosts or guests get any, or the background people, like the monitors in the room. And none of the us get any money. The money goes strictly. To the running of the shows. Um, howdy, Nancy. And, uh, what else? Oh yeah, we have, um, current archives that are available the first week after a show lives, a show airs live. And then after that week, they go into the subscription archives where you pay $5 a month. Each month, you have to determine whether you want to go on for another month or not, and then you put $5 more in. Um, you're never automatically billed uh, and the money taken out of your account. We don't do that. Um, if you have questions or comments, which we love, be sure to put them in the chat room in all caps so that they get my attention. And I don't mind when you're chatting among each other. Just please make sure you don't put that chat in all caps. Because if I see all caps, I'm looking for something that is directed either at Colleen or me. Okay. I think I hit all of the things I need to hit first. Now, today... My guest is Sienna Morgan Craig, who is Colleen's granddaughter. She's 19 years old and has been blind since birth. She uses the cane that was made for blind people, but she doesn't have a seeing eye dog. Um, she's interested in one, but that's as far as it's progress for that right now. She taught herself at five to play piano by ear. We'll ask her more about that later. She sings, raps, writes lyrics, acts, and makes live Facebook videos. And Colleen created a, a YouTube for her. It's named 
Sienna Bees. So if you look for, let me put it. Let me put it. Uh, Colleen, I'll, I'll, type I'll type it in. in. Thanks. And if you go there, um, that's her YouTube. Yeah, if you go to her YouTube, you can hear her singing. And she also has a Facebook uh, place that you can go in, and Colleen will put those two links into the chat for you. Okay. You want to come on in and say hello, Sienna? I would be very happy to. Thank you so much for having me on. I've never really been on, like, a live show. The only time I've been on the radio is to host my perfect, my favorite ten songs, and I feel very happy. I feel very touched to be on here today. And I've just never been interviewed like this. Well, this will be this will be quite the experience for you. <laughs> um, I was reading the chat. Sorry, and I and I may go down deep when you ask me these questions. I'll try not to get too emotional. Oh, well, don't worry about getting emotional. That just lets us know that you're really a human being. Mm-hmm. You're not a bot, like mm-hmm. you've been talking about lately. <laughs> Um, so don't worry. And if if we get too sensitive for you, just say, I really don't want to talk about that. I have no problem okay. not, not talking about something you really don't want to talk about. And if I don't mention something you do want to talk about, then tell me. All right. This is just going to be you and me talking. All right. Okay. So um, the listeners probably are not familiar with blind people and the things that they have to go through. So I'm going to ask you a lot of questions that people who see are curious about people who can't see. Lay them on me. Hit me with them. (laughs) Well, I'm not going to hit you with anything. I crack jokes. I may have to smack you upside the head sometime, but. (laughs) <laughs> I won't hit you with anything. I know. <laughs> okay. Uh, you went to blind school. You graduated from a blind school. You want to tell us about your blind school, where it was and what happened in it and what it was like? Did you have peer pressure or not? Um, you know, the first year when I went to the blind school was when I was 10 because I used to go to public school. But when I was 10, I had to go to the blind school because, you know, I used to have an assistant that knew Braille and then he moved to New Mexico and um, they found two assistants, but they didn't know Braille. So, you know, when I went to the blind school, I, I kind of felt lonely and, you know, more crazier and more anxiety coming because you know a lot of people don't um um a lot of people in the public school you know they may not have known a lot of things that blind people can do and you know i know i don't know a lot of people of things that you know sighted people can do so it's you know it was a little challenging for me but then you know as the days and years kind of went on by i kept making new friends and, you know, talking to them and keeping in touch with them and, you know, visiting their houses and things like that. So it, it, at first, you know, I thought it wasn't going to be the good school for me. But then, you know, afterwards, I felt like it was my home and I never wanted to leave. The public school. Are you talking the public school or the blind school? The blind school. I never oh, wanted to leave school. the blind school. Yeah, well, I felt like yeah. That was my home. Right. You were, you felt safe there. Uh huh. Yeah, I can understand that. Definitely, I, I can't imagine not being able to see. My grandmother had macular degen- degeneration in her eyes, and she went blind when she was in her late seventies, early eighties. She wow. lived, yeah, she lived to be 92, I believe. I had a great grandmother who lived to be 102. 
Wow. And, yeah. And she was very with it up until the last breath. It was it was wow. very interesting to see her. Um so that's the only the only person I've been around who was blind, but she had seen most of her life. So she would be a different case than yours. Hmm. Because you have never been able to see anything, right? I have not. Wow. When somebody says, oh, it's a beautiful day out there, you should see the leaves, do you get kind of, do you feel kind of bad because you can't see the leaves, or are you adjusted to that kind of talk? I am. I'm, I'm pretty much adjusted to the talk, but... I mean, I can't see with my eyes, but I can do it with my hands. So when they say I should see the leaves, you know, I I guess I could just feel them. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Hey, it's like, okay, I'm skipping around in what I sent your mom or your grandma, but that's okay. That's when right. when you meet somebody and you've been talking with them for a little while, do you get curious to what they look like? Do you do you ask them if you can touch their face or their hands or Um, no, not really. I because I'm I'm kind of the same way. I don't like people just randomly touching me. It's not really my thing. So I, I don't want to be rude and be like, you know, can I touch you? Or, you know, because, you know, it's a little, maybe it, it might be a little, you know, Invasive? For them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would want to. If I couldn't see somebody, I would really want to be able to touch their face and their head. I wouldn't get personal with them and go down there and pass their neck, but <laughs> right. touch their hands. But I'm a touchy-feely person. I like to get the feelings that I feel from them, their vibes. Yeah. When That brings up another question. When okay. you are around people, do you feel the vibes coming from their body? Um. At times, yeah. Like when I when I hear somebody, like when I know they're angry, I can kind of feel that, or you know, if they're happy or whatever, if they're sad, you know, I can kind of feel that kind of wave passing through me. Can you, if you're in a room all by yourself and somebody comes in quietly, can you feel them? Uh, not really. Because if they just sneak up on me, not really. <laughs> That's not nice if they do that, though. Right. I'm with you. Yeah. Even though I can see, I hate it when people sneak up and go boo at me. Uh-huh. Scare the bejeebers out of me. I'm easily mm-hmm. frightened like that. <laughs> 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 um, okay, you were talking about your school. You want to tell them what school it was and where it's located? Yeah, I can tell you also some unique things about my school that oh, you may, wonderful. a lot of other schools don't even have. So um, it's Indiana School for the Blind and Visually Impaired. So there were people that were blind, that were totally blind. But then, you know, there were people that were kind of blind, like they could see colors and maybe light and shadows or something. But I'm, you know, I'm totally blind. But there's other people, you know, that were visually impaired, like they could see everything. And um, it's located 7725 North College Avenue. I can't remember the zip code by heart, but, you know, that's okay. Wow. Um, <laughs> what city? Um, Indianapolis. Ah, that, yeah. So is that far away from Muncie? Did you have to move far away? Um, well, I actually used to, um, move from city to city. I used to kind of bounce around from city to city. Like, I'd, I'd live someplace for, like, two years, and then, you know, um, next thing you know, one of my, like, my stepmother would tell me, you know, oh, we're going to have a kid. You know, we're going to need to move to another place where we're going to have an extra room. So, you know, at first when I lived in Indy, in Beach Grove, um, I used to take the bus, and 
only stay at the school in the dorms for special occasions. But then when we moved to Anderson, you know, I, I still did the same thing, you know, took the bus, stayed at the school for special occasions. But then, you know, um, we had to move to Muncie because, you know, we needed to spend more time with our families and, you know, we were having another kid. So, um, when I moved to Muncie, I went and rode the bus for the first semester, but then, you know, everybody was complimenting, wow, she's doing so good. She's really improved these years. So now, you know, I stayed at the dorm and, you know, participated with all my friends on whatever rec outings I went to, but I will admit I was a stinker at times. <laughs> I think we all were. <laughs> So they kick you out of the dorm or what? <laughs> How bad of a stinker were you? Um, I never really got kicked out of the dorm, but they threatened me if I didn't stop, you know, if I didn't stop, you know, flipping out or, you know, stop getting upset because this happened or that happened, you know. Just because, you know, I'm on a dorm restriction doesn't mean I have to go flip out and be like, oh, I hate this place. I don't like being here. You don't do that. No. You know, you. but then, you know, when they threatened that I'd be kicked out of the dorm. That just made me, oh, wait, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. You had to stop and determine, what do I want the most? Do I want to stay here or not? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> kind of puts life in perspective. Right. <laughs> so um, you said you had some stories about the School for the Blind. Do you want to tell those? Yes, and a lot of people, a lot of schools don't maybe have all this stuff. You know, they had a swimming pool, they had a bowling alley, a wrestling room, um, a student center, which is actually like a room with it's it's kind of like a um, a restaurant slash store. You know, you can get. I think the most part that I was a big fan of there was. I mean, I always looked at the food just to see what there was, and my I think my biggest favorite part of that was the all the snack cakes and the candy but um I never really bought anything at um um at first because I never had the money but then you know when you're a senior um you get more privileges because um you can eat up in the student center for lunch um you can get things I mean you can also get things when you're not a senior at the student center I mean you can buy like a, a drink or ice cream when um, you're in the dorm. So um, that's really how the student center works. And it's almost mostly it's under a dollar, but other times, you know, it's maybe a dollar seventy five if you get two things. But um, that's pretty much how the student center works. And there's games up there like pool, air hockey, um Every time I went up there, a lot of people were playing air hockey because they didn't really have the pool balls out. And um, they had a piano, which I always like to tinker around on. Um, they also had a TV, which they never really used. All we really heard was music from the stereo. But um, that's really how the student center works. Um, the dorms are, you know, I think a lot of stu schools have dorms, so I'm pretty sure I won't go into details for that. Um, yeah, it's it's a really good school. Back to, uh, you mentioned air hockey. Did you play air hockey? Uh, there were a few times I played it because a lot of, like, other people wanted to play against me, but, you know. Um, how, how in the world did you do that? Um, what you really did was just, like, if you turn the table on, you have, like, these little, um, pucks. Or no, not pucks, but um, oh, what are they called? Um, things that look like pucks. Yeah, like they look like little hockey sticks, but they're not sticks. They're like little oh. circle things with like handles on the top. So you know, you just kind of scoot it around, scoot it around, just to find the puck. And then if it goes in the goal, you know, you get a point. And then you know, after a few goals of me playing against someone, I was just like, okay, I'm done. You know, yeah, like. It wasn't really winning or losing, but really I was just like, okay, I'm done. 
you won. <laughs> I'm going to do something else now. You, you knocked enough of those pucks around. <laughs> yeah. And and you said they have a bowling alley there. Were you uh, able to bowl? Um, I was. I had to use one of those things that um, blind people use, like one of those ramps. Um, I used one of those every time. Um, what? Explain the ramp to me. I've never seen a blind person bowl. Um, the ramp is like a little um, metal. It's kind of made out of like metal bars. Um, it's like you stand at the, there's like a big part that's just like the part where you get the ball centered. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it goes down like the ramp part that, you know, you push the ball off the ramp, it goes down the alley. And I was able to get like one time, um, um, at gym, we would do bowling one time. I was able to manage to get four strikes in a row. Oh, wow. I know. Um, I was pretty good at it, but um, other times, you know, I'd get gutter balls. But just to play around because, you know, if I was having a good day, you know, just to play around and be like, oh, I give up. But when it was my turn, I'd always just get up and get a ball and then start bowling again. So this metal frame that you you – roll the ball down on did you adjust it on the alleyway for a certain way that you wanted your ball to go or or was it just always stationary thing um it's one of those things that um you can adjust but usually i was the kind of girl to ask somebody to help me so that way you know if the ball was centered you know if i was able to hit pins you know i'd always ask to kind of center the ramp and then, you know, I'd um, roll the ball. And then afterwards, you know, uh-huh. if I didn't, if I hit, like, a couple pins, I'd be like, okay, you know, would you be able to help me center it again? Because sometimes, like, when I roll the ball, the ramp kind of moves a little bit. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. That'd give you some pins left over. How did you know where the pins were that were left over when you didn't make a strike? Um, they just told me, because this is the kind of alley where you don't, I don't think you're able to touch the pins. It's kind of like a computerized thing where, um, um, where the pins are set up. Uh Uh-huh. But, um, I think, I think the maintenance would be able, I think the maintenance are the only people to touch the pins. I don't know. Like I said, I think it's mostly computerized. Well, yeah, I didn't think you were touching the pins. I just wondered, how did you figure out which way to throw the ball toward the pins that were left? How did you know which pins were left or where they were? So, so people told you. Yeah. Huh, I see. Life and is so different for you. It is. And um, not only do they have a bowling alley, they have the wrestling room. They have... Um, a Monon Trail, which you walk, like, you can walk it, and, you know, they have, like, a place where you can get a snow cone or ice cream, and they also have a fitness trail, and they have a scout cabin, they have, um, let's see, um, I told you about the student center, um, the scout cabin, the trail that was the nature trail, is that outside? Yes, um, it is. And um, and they let you walk it alone, or did you go in groups? Oh, we always go in groups. I'm, I never really walked that alone. I don't blame you. I was in girl. I was in Girl Scouts for a few years. Mm-hmm. Um. It was it was pretty fun, but there were some students, you know. I, I'm not trying to be negative, but there were some middle schoolers, you know, that were loud and obnoxious and stuff. But most of the time, you know, I had fun, like, making new things that I never thought I'd be able to make. Like what? Um, My mom, I gave my mom this for Christmas. We learned how to make body butter, bath salt, and... um sugar um sugar scrubs 
And we also learn to make these things called set-upons. They're like, um, it's like two plastic, uh, sheets and, um, underneath those, in between those plastic sheets are like, it's like a, a sponge padding. And, you know, it's kind of like a sandwich. So what you do is you kind of sew that up with yarn. And I think that was the pretty, I think I was the fastest one to ever get my sit-upon done. I'd like, I'd like, um, first they'd tell me like how to use the needle and the yarn. It it was one of the fake needles. So I didn't have to worry about giving myself shots. (laughs) Good. So (laughs) I think I was the one in Girl Scouts that like got their sit-upon done like, like that. Oh, nice. Did you get a badge for that? I did. I have no idea where my sash is right now, but um, I sold a lot of Girl Scout cookies in my years. I think there was one year that I only sold, like, I don't know, 50 boxes or so, but, you know, usually I got the help, but this time, you know, they, um, my parents told me, you know, they're not going to exactly help me. They're going to be the ones... I'm going to be the ones, you know, signing their names and stuff. And I think the problem was, you know, I didn't know, like, how to write all letters and signature. All I really know how to do is write S. Craig. That's it. But I think the problem was, you know, I think mostly the problem was, you know, um, I didn't know how to sign names. It wasn't the fact that, you know, I was lazy because I would, I will admit I was, I, I am lazy a lot, but you know, that's everybody. Well, not everybody. There's some people you can't turn, you can't find their turn off button. (laughs) I know. Um, (laughs) I'll admit my mom's most, when my mom doesn't have to work, she's mostly lazy. (laughs) Hey. Working takes a lot out of you, little girl. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm with do you, you. Do you work? Um, you know, I used to, um, at the school. I worked my last, my senior year from September to June, and I was the school receptionist because, um, there's some stories behind why I wanted to be a receptionist because one time I, um, went into a radio studio to host my favorite 10 songs. And what you have to do in order to do that, I don't know if they do this anymore, but you uh, fill out a form to the radio station and telling them your favorite 10 songs. Like, there's, like, questions behind it. Like, what's the first song you ever downloaded? What's your favorite song now? Like, what's a song you would dance to at your wedding? What's your, what song would you dedicate to your parents? Um, all that stuff, you know, what was your favorite song, but is not anymore. So I listed all of them and my favorite 10 songs. And one time, yeah, I was, um, I was in the bathroom, (laughs) but I, I won't go into detail, so I'll just say I was in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. That's it. Um, then my stepmom told me she had a surprise for me. I was like, was it money? She said, no, it's better. <laughs> she yeah. Said, I, she said it was better than that. I said, what is it? She said, it's about my perfect 10. I just started screaming. <laughs> well, did you know what it was? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. So apparently they accepted the form. You know, I've also run on other radio stations before, but I've never, like, been into a radio studio for more than, you know, 25 minutes. That was a really good thing for me. I mean, I won on, um, it's a, well, uh, I'm when sorry? you, when you won, what happened? Um, it was, it was a, uh, radio station called Radio Disney. It, it, it was, like, um, you won 100 chances to win something. That me- that didn't mean, you know, you were the grand prize winner because what happens is they do different things each week. So, you know, maybe you did, maybe you get 100 chances to win to be in a movie. And, you know, and 
other things, you got, like, a power prize, which is, like, you know, maybe, like, a Radio Disney prize pack. And that would always come in the mail. It was, like, a bag with a Radio Disney T-shirt and a water bottle. So, basically. So, you um, won prizes. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, okay. I didn't know what you won. <laughs> okay. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. And um, go ahead. I won one time. I won on a radio station called one hundred four point one WLBC. I won first listener of the day when I was like eight. So that was the first time you know I went into a radio station ever and got to feel a a studio microphone and a mixing board and all the things like that. Oh my. Mm-hmm. It, how did you win? Were you the first caller or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> cool. I used to do those things. And you, if you're the number, you're the 13th caller or the first caller or whatever, I'd try it. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> the only time, well, mm-hmm. one time I got on radio when my kids were babies and they were talking about baseball and, and the commentator wanted to hear people's thoughts about the the World Series and so I had called in and he answered and and he asked me what my thoughts were and I said I am so sick of watching all this baseball and now we're into the uh, the contest they have at the end I forgot what you call it mm-hmm. and and I said when you watch it on TV, you're subjected to watching the men have to readjust themselves and scratch themselves in the crotch. And that can be pretty overbearing for some people. Yes. The guy laughed so hard, it gave him stuff to talk about for, for a week. Wow. <laughs> it was fun. I enjoyed yes. it. <laughs> so... um I know that you are interested in bands. Yes. You, you want to share with the people your favorite band? Um, my favorite band for everyone out there is a band called Lifehouse. They're um, a contemporary hard rock. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would know um, their first number one uh single hanging by a moment that was their first number one single that ever topped the charts and you know they're still coming out with albums these days and i'm facebook friends with two of the band members one is a past member i mean like like he's he's still alive but he left the band in 2014 and i'm friends with their drummer and their producer Hmm. Is that the ones that you that you telepathically type talk with? Uh, or are you we, friends in person? No, we we don't really talk. I think um, I don't know them in person, but um, we don't exactly talk on Facebook either. And I'm not I'm not mad about that. You know, they're they're always busy, so you know it's not my fault. Right, right, but. So, how did you get interested in music? Do you know, or did you just, you grew up liking it a lot? I think I just grew up liking it a lot, and music is my life. Um, Besides, aside from food and water and God, and I know I can't live without them, but I can't live without my music. (laughs) Well, it gives you an interest. Uh huh. So, and you write lyrics, right, for music? I do. Do you make up the musical part of it and then put lyrics to it, or do you just make the lyrics, or how do you do this? That really depends because, you know, maybe I have a melody in mind and um, then the lyrics come, and then maybe I have lyrics in my mind and then melody comes to it in mind. But the first time, you know, I ever wrote lyrics, um, I never knew what this meant, um, but apparently I was plagiarizing. But, you know, I used to do that with stories and music, but I never knew what plagiarizing was. So at first, you know, I was like, okay, I'm going to um, make this song up 
to a rhythm that I already know, and I'm going to use lyrics that this singer had in mind. And also, you know, I used to write songs and lyrics that had nothing to do with the song. And then, you know, when I listen to the songs carefully, now I'm feeling, you know, also it has to be about this. It can't be about, you know, being with your friends and then, then, and then, you know, having fun all day in your car. And then, um, it can't be about, you know, meeting up with this person and telling them, oh, you, you're the one for me. And then the next verse can't be about, you know, someone having a fight with someone out on the street. It has to be about the same topic the first verse was about and really what the whole song is about. You so, mean what, the theme of the lyric that you're writing Yes, has it, to be the same topic all the way through. Right, because, like, the first verse can't be about, you know, meeting up with a guy that you really wanted to talk to and saying, you know, you're you're the one for me. And then the next verse can't be about a street fight with two people you didn't know. And then... Yeah, the no, first, it all has to be the same topic. Don't yes. be throwing in things that don't go with that topic. Right, because no one will want to hear the song. They'll just want to shut you down completely. Right, but... Y- you have learned that you can't use other people's music to put your words to, right? Yes. So now do you make up your own music to go with your lyrics? I do pretty much. Um, there's just one song that I did a parody to, and that was just recently. But I've looked it up on YouTube, and there's a lot of parodies to the song. So <laughs> that was the only parody I did to the song. So I don't think that really gives you, you know... That is good. You did research on that. Uh Now, you said you looked it up on the Internet. Mm -hmm. You want to explain to us who see and you don't see, how does someone who doesn't see look something up on the Internet? Oh, it's really easy. Um, See, with iPhones and iPads, um, they have this thing called voiceover, which um, all you have to do is tell Siri to turn on or turn off voiceover like for the blind all you have to do is tell it to turn on voiceover and it tells you it turned on voiceover and you know some sighted people can use voiceover like my mom for example she uses voiceover she's kind of like me with it but other times you know she has to turn off voiceover because you know voiceover may not you know have all the commands that the phone without voiceover doesn't. So what you have to do is tell Siri to turn off voiceover and then uh, press the buttons on the phone that voiceover did not have, and then all you have to do is turn on voiceover again. And um, that's really how it works. So when you have voiceover on, how do you do your research? Do you just tell it, please find yada yada for me? um, Yeah, all you have to do is just tell Siri, you know, if I were to Google, uh, let's see. Okay, um, I'll just do like a recent research that I did. Okay. Uh, Google flu shots and ice cream because that's a video that um, I've always watched. Or actually, no, Google Wheel of Fortune episodes from 2001. So. You tell Siri, Google Wheel of Fortune episodes from 2001. And then it'll say, searching Google for Wheel of Fortune episodes from 2001. So it, you know, uh, brings that up. And then um, in order to get on YouTube, there's like different links. You know, there's videos, books, news, advertisements, um, all that. All what I always do is just click on the videos link, and then it you brings click, up, um, double tap. Oh, Ev- everything on Voiceover you have to double tap. Like if so, you, you have want, a place on your uh, phone that you tap. Um, actually, you can tap anywhere on the screen, pretty much. Oh, but okay. um, if you want to select something, say like if you wanted to select the videos link. You double tap that, and that selects it for you. And then, you know, it just brings up a whole list of videos. And when you find the video you want, 
You double tap that. You double tap that, which means wait, so wait, what? Sienna. How do you how do you know what video is it showing you? Um, it just it just how tells make, me. Oh, it tells you. It yeah. talks to you. Yes. Okay, I missed that part. Okay. Um, you have to be specific with me. I've never been through what you've been through. Yeah, I understand. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but how it works is, you know, it'll tell you how long the video is, what the video is, and when it was posted. So what I do is I select what the video tells me. It'll say, you know, Wheel of Fortune... 2001 episode. When it says that, I double tap that to select that video. Then how? Okay, Wheel of Fortune is where they make the 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 words, right? Uh huh. They get the letters. They spin the wheel. How do you? How do you watch that? How do you participate with that? How do you know what letters are, go where? Um, really, I don't, what, what I was, um, I always watch Wheel of Fortune because I just remember watching it from when I was a baby, but, um, I auditioned for Family Week because, you know, I'd always need help with Wheel of Fortune, so my mom would come with me on Family Week, and, you know, Go, go with you where? To Wheel of Fortune. If you get on. If I get on. Um, and... You know, if I did get on, if I was able to go, you know, my mom would come with me for family week. And, you know, after so many letters have been called and are up there, she'd probably whisper the answer in my ear, and then I would be the one solving it. I'm completely lost on this. Colleen, you want to help me? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Because, because she, she doesn't, doesn't see. see. <clears throat> and on, and on family, family week, she could she have, could her, have mom her mom come in, in with, with her. her. Now, now Sienna, Sienna would hear them. And where, Colleen? Oh. oh. Okay, let's okay. back, back up a bit. Yeah, please. Sienna's, Sienna's favorite, favorite TV, TV show, show has, has always been, been Wheel, of Wheel of Fortune. Uh-huh. Um, um, that's what, that's she's, what talking she's talking about. She did a... Uh, uh, try out audition, audition to get, to get onto, onto the show. The show. <coughs> mm -hmm. and, and she actually went to Hollywood and did this. Well, well she, no, you, no, can you can do, do them. Um, oh, do the yeah, they have on YouTube. City, right. Oh, you can on YouTube? Yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 okay. So she, so did, she her did her audition. audition. And, and if, if she, she gets selected, selected to be on, on it, on then, then she... she Go, go on, on the family, the family week, week, and her mom, and her mom would, go would go with, go with her. her to Hollywood. To Hollywood, to Hollywood or wherever, or wherever the heck it's done, it's done, I don't know. Okay, and, uh, and uh, be on together, and, together and, and you know they, you know, they kind of can talk, can to, talk each to each other, other as, a, as team. a team. So they would stand up there together to solve the puzzle. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. And. So, and so they were on the show. Did we miss seeing her on Wheel of Fortune? No, no, no. no, no, they, no. Haven't they haven't gone, gone yet. yet. Sienna, Sienna hasn't been selected, selected, but she, but has, she audition. has audition. It takes, it takes up, up to 18, 18 months. Oh, so you recently auditioned? Yes. Cool. You know, I'm going to share with you. My mom was actually on Wheel of Fortune out in Hollywood. Wow. She auditioned in their uh, big audition. I think she even had to drive to Indianapolis because they lived in South Bend, Indiana at that time. She drove to Indianapolis and auditioned, and they picked her. So uh, she went out to Hollywood, and my dad and my mom's cousins, who are my second cousins, I guess, they got to go and sit in the audience. Dad just was interested in Vanna. He wanted to see Vanna in person. <laughs> but she got to stand in this position that's right next to Pat Sachak. And she won a free spin, and she could have used it and solved the puzzle because it would have given her the right letters. 
she passed and kept the free spin. <laughs> wow. First thing I said to her when I got to talk to her after the show is, did you bring that frickin' free spin home with you? <laughs> she laughed. No, I should have used it. But she, she actually got to be on the Wheel of Fortune, and it was fun. I think if you get an opportunity, that will be a real experience that you'll have for the rest of your life. Yet, yeah, actually, I've never... Nobody has been on Wheel of Fortune blind, but people have been on Jeopardy, and that's one of my favorite shows too. But I don't think I've ever, I don't think I'll ever be able to audition for Jeopardy because the only categories I know are music. So, yeah. um, but uh, there was someone on Wheel of Fortune who had autism and had, I think, nine brain surgeries. And he was diagnosed with Asperger's, and that's exactly what I am diagnosed with. I am blind and diagnosed with autism. I did not know that. Maybe Colleen told me and I forgot, but that's the way my mind <coughs> doesn't work anymore. Wow, so not only do you have your blindness to contend with, but you have your autism. Yes. Oh, man. <clears throat> do you ever find it? overwhelming for you oh a lot but i feel like you know i'm overcoming some challenges you certainly are (laughs) wow um do they make you take medication for that stuff um the only thing i really take medication for now is anxiety but i used to take medic medication for um seizures but i'm so glad i outgrow them thank goodness um i think the seizures were probably the hardest times in my life because um one time i actually had a seizure in public school um in elementary school when i was doing math i had my head down and i wouldn't respond for like i don't know a few seconds and my eyes started rolling and i you know i started swallowing and um They had me go on EEGs, which are, I don't know the, um, I don't know exactly the words for EEG, but what they had to do was put wires on my head, Uh and um, they, like, they had me stay in the hospital overnight. I mean, the first time I was pretty brave, you know, but I was like, I don't know, seven or eight, or I'd say, I'd say six or seven when they did the second EEG, and they did, like, they had like um they gave they put the wires on my head and like i was i was pretty good for like a few minutes and then when they used the air gun i think i started freaking oh, out like you know yeah. how little kid like you know how when people get when, when little kids get a shot like i was all no 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 yeah. no no you can't do that no yeah I tried, yeah i tried i tried to get away but they held me down oh um, that's even more terrifying i know Oh, wow. Especially with someone with with autism. Oh, my gosh. And you're blind. You couldn't see what was going on. <sighs> I think, and I was pretty much brave when they gave me shots, like, until, like, I wasn't really brave until I was, like, six or seven. But when I was, like, four or five, and every time they'd give me a vaccination, I'd be like, no, no. Yeah, but Sienna, every kid's that way. I I can't say every. Most children are that way. Heck, most adults are that way. You bring a needle toward them, they're going to, oh, no. (laughs) And and I think I was like that when I had to go to the dentist, too, for a couple times. But then, like, the third time, I pretty much talked to them. But, I mean, the first time I went, they kind of held me down the second time I delayed it so I pretty much stayed there for like an hour or so like crying telling them like no you can't do that and I'd like I tried to get up out of the chair and I had like these little boots like sometimes they'd come off other times they wouldn't one time I got up out of the chair and started scooting out of the room on the floor they picked me up and carried me back to the chair on the way there my boot fell off <laughs> so they had to do my teeth only when I with me in one boot. 
What did this? <laughs> I don't understand boots. You mean these boots would hold your legs still or something? No, they were just they were just shoes that I wore daily to school oh. and stuff. They were. Oh. <laughs> you just turned into a little hellion, so they'd leave you alone. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can understand that. <laughs> I can identify with that. <laughs> of course, it makes it awful for the adults. <laughs> uh, and, and actually, when I got my ears pierced when I was like five or six, I didn't even scream or cry. I only just flinched a little bit when they did when they took the ear guns. That's it. That's because you wanted that done. Uh huh. And I I didn't know that like they were going to give me a shot in the ears. Oh, you and didn't I, know that. Oh. I mean, I didn't. I thought it wouldn't hurt, but actually, I didn't even cry or anything. I just jumped. That hurts usually afterwards when they get infected or they're oh, hearing. Yeah. Oh, that was. Oh, oh, yeah. I know. I did my own piercings. It was painful, <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted it done. Yeah. Boy, I can't imagine going to the dentist or the doctor and not being able to see what they're coming at you with. Yeah. That that has to be terrifying. Do you have doctors and dentists now who are understanding and will explain things to you before they do it? I'm pretty sure I do, but right now I don't have a public doctor and public dentist since I just graduated from um, school. So that's what I'm trying to get to right now. When you were going to school, you had doctors that were there at the school who took care of you? Uh-huh. And, um, oh, oh, Nice. We had a dentist come to the school every six months, and um, I always go down there. That is nice, yes. Uh Well, I'm going to give you a little suggestion here. When you're looking for the dentist or the doctor, I would advise uh, setting up a meeting first Uh and talking with them and say, asking questions of them that you want to know and seeing will they explain things to you prior to touching you or doing anything to you and um, make you aware of what they're thinking and are going to do to you You and then get the feel for them yeah see if you can work with this person that way, you're not having to go in there and be frightened out of your mind, and then you'll never go back to another one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just a suggestion. Right. Wow. That, that'd be so terrifying. I, I, I can't imagine. Oof. I'm proud, I'm proud of you for what you do. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, you don't even need to thank me yet. <laughs> Thank you for sharing with us. It, it, so many times in your life with not being able to see what's coming at you and you're in a situation that you do not understand, what's your first reaction? Um, I Really just nervousness because, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. And then... Um, Sometimes afterwards, I'll be like, hey, that wasn't so bad. But during this the event, do you keep your cool most of the time, or are there times when you just lose it? Uh, most of the time, I keep my cool because uh, I'm not afraid to try new things as I once was. Well, that's good. So you said you would ride a bus uh, Mm -hmm. to your school. Did you do that all by yourself? Did you go leave your house, go to the bus station, get on the bus, ride the bus, get off the bus, go to the school all by yourself? Um, What happened was, you know, when I when I first rode, when I first had the bus come, me and my dad would go down to the bus stop, which was like it was. Pretty much right by our house. It was like all you had to do was go downstairs, go out the door, walk at least 30 steps, and um, it's pretty much connected to our house because 
the bus comes to my house, but I got to I got to walk a long way. But then when I went to Anderson, you know, um, the bus would just pull up into my driveway. So I went out the door and just stood on the uh, stoop or whatever you call it. And uh, so it wasn't a public bus thing. It was basically a private bus. Yeah, like a school bus. Yeah, okay. So when they would come to where you were standing waiting for them, did the bus driver get out and help you in the bus, or did you have to figure out it getting in there by yourself? Um, I really just independently figured it out. I mean, at first I had a grown-up um, show me how to get to the bus, but then afterwards, you know, I was, I, I'm a pretty much a fast learner, so I, I just did it like that. Good for you. You're a spunky little thing. Mm-hmm. Good for you. I think you'd have to have spunk being in that kind of a situation. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Okay, we're getting close to the top of the hour, and I okay. don't want to start a new subject before we go on break. Okay. Um, so I'll ask um, Grandma Colleen, would you please take us on a break? All righty, we're back. Well, <laughs> they were hearing what we were saying the whole darn time. And then, then when I figured, Nora, Nora, when it Skyped me to tell me that, hey, we're hearing y'all. Um, <laughs> so I put me on mute, and then when we come back live, of course you can't hear me because I'm on mute. <laughs> I just love live radio. (laughs) Hey, you know what I forgot, y'all? Angel card. I forgot the angel card at the beginning, so hold on. I'm shuffling them up. I'm going to do them right now. And then remind me at the end to do my angel card. What we do, um, Sienna, now that I've got these angel cards, nice angel cards from, uh, Christia. She's an angel medium. Mm-hmm. She's, she, I ordered them from her and she sent them to me. I pull an angel card at the mm-hmm. beginning and end of all my shows because angels wow. are very important in my life. Okay, let me do this. Angels, please look at the people who are listening, who are gonna listen, and at the chatters. I mean, the people chatting on the air. Let me draw the right card for everybody. Okay, let's see what I have. Um, I have Archangel. I can't. She. This writing is so little. Bear with me, folks. Met. Metatron. Oh, it's Metatron. Sacred Geometry. Let me read to you. What's that one? Uh, Okay. Archangel Metatron comes forth this day to remind you of how your thoughts create, of how thoughts create are very powerful and can change your life for better or worse. Your thoughts can create your world that you choose to live in. Metatron would like to advise you to be aware of this fact and to understand that as you think and speak, you are creating your world around you. Your thoughts and words on an energetic level are shapes of geometric patterns. The vibration will depend on the pattern Turning. The most recent example of this is Dr. Masaru Emoto's experiment with water crystals. Oh my god. <laughs> Synchronicity. We've been talking about this, Sienna. That's why I'm so excited. Mm-hmm. Nancy, especially. Dr. Emoto showed how positive words created beautiful snowflakes and how negative words created damaged snowflakes. Science has proven that nature is made of sacred geometry patterns. We are part of this patterning, and so is the earth. We have an energy grid around us like the earth. Ask Archangel Metatron 
to bring this light and healing into your grid and the earth's grid. Feel the balancing. Arrange some of your crystals in sacred geometry patterns. Have fun experimenting with patterns that speak to you. Give thanks to Metatron for his guidance. Very good. Very good. So even though you can't see, your words um, are very powerful, Sienna. Remember that. Oh, definitely. Build your world with your words. And your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Very nice for all of us. Okay. We'll leave that one out so when I draw again, uh, I won't draw the same card. Of course, I don't think I would because, uh, because I don't think the angels would let me. (laughs) Oh, goody. Okay. I'm reading my Skype messages to see, make sure we're not we're not sharing other things that we didn't know we were sharing. Right. <laughs> I love live radio. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we did the live the the angel card. Um now I need to take a deep breath cuz I so did not talk about what I had written down to talk to you about, which yes. is the way my shows go. I okay. think I think I have it planned. Every once in a great while, I'll sit down and try to plan one. (laughs) And it never goes according to plan. I do want to um, tell the people about your interest in reading um, Braille books. Okay. Because you expressed to me you enjoy reading Braille books. I do. So I would like to... uh, Tell them some of the books you like and and tell them Christmas is coming right around the corner and Sienna would be so excited if there were some Santas out there that sent her some books. Because, you know, we, we all can't afford everything we want to do for our kids. It's nice when Santa steps in and helps us. And if Santa wants to uh, contact Colleen at the at the thing that that she'll put in to to the chat, you can contact her for an address for Santa to send some books to Sienna, Braille books. Um, <clears throat> she likes the Secret Garden. She likes mysteries. She likes books about musical artists, and she likes books angels, mediums, astral projection. She's really interested in astral projection, telepathy, spiritual communication of all kinds, and she likes somebody called Judy Bloom. So if any Santa's out there, are wanting to add to their list, there you go. I think it'd be super duper. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other interest in Braille books that you'd like that I did not mention? Um, Actually, I just almost forgot about this. There's a book, um, it's a series called Anne of Green Gables. Um, The first book is called Anne of Green Gables, but there's more books about Anne. Um. I can't remember what they're called off the top of my head because I've never really read them. All I've really read is Anne of Green Gables, but I really like that book. You'd like the rest of them, too, then. Yes. I'm familiar with Anne of Green Gables. Mm, I'm writing down yes. Let's see. Anne of Green Gables. Okay. Got that written down. I didn't want to forget that, Sienna. I had that at the end of my list here. And <laughs> that's okay. Definitely did not want to forget that. Um, right. I'm going to ask you something personal. If you don't want to answer this, you just tell me you don't want to answer it. Okay. Do you know, um, oh, now why did his name leave my head? The blind musician, he went to the blind school in Lansing when I lived, the kids and I and their father lived in Lansing. Michigan, and there's a school for the blind there. Well, uh, 
he went to that school and he became a famous artist. And I'll be darned if I could. He made uh, Ivory and Ebony and Ivory song. Oh, come on. What's his name? Help me, folks. Uh, Is it? Uh, I was going to say Max. I can't remember his last no, name. No, no, not Max. Well, anyway. Stevie Wonder. Yes. Yes. I've yes. heard of him. I have his Stevie songs. Stevie Wonder. Well, I've always wondered <laughs> why Stevie Wonder uh, tends to sway his body. And I noticed on your video where you were singing your song mm-hmm. that you, you tend to sway your body, too. Where I does that talk come about that? From? Yeah, could, would you? I would be able. I would love to. Um, I think it's actually. A, I think it's a lot. I think it's um, common for a lot of blind people because, um, like, they don't. Maybe they do it when they're bored, or maybe they do it just just because. Um, because um, that's really like how they act. I guess you could say. How they feel, you mean, inside? Yeah. They feel like they're swaying? What? Uh-huh. Really? Yeah. Are, are you swaying to a, a sound, a music, a, some kind of a noise, a vibration? Um. Sometimes I do it just for the fun. Of, like if I'm imagining, like, fun stuff or something like that. Or sometimes, you know, if, if a song comes on that I really like, I just do, like, a, a, I do it so happily. <laughs> when you're more excited, and, you, you do it. Oh, oh definitely. When I'm more excited, definitely, as well. So I'm thinking maybe it's a way for you to release your your... Feelings that you're having at the time. Oh, yeah. Oh, very interesting. Wow. I always wondered, why are they swaying? And and like Monkey <laughs> says, Ray Charles used to sway a lot, too, and he oh, was blind. He did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> huh. Very interesting. Um. And not just, Debriel says, you go inward and feel and become the music. So cool. Not just the, when music is on Debriel, they do it for, for feelings of joy too. And, and, and for feelings they get. That's how they're releasing those feelings. Yes. Okay. That's really interesting. Thank you for mm-hmm. sharing that. You're welcome. Uh, also, I'm sorry if you can hear my neighbors. They're being real poops. That's no, okay. So you said you do, uh, you do listen to TV. I do. What shows interest you that you watch? Um, like I said, I watch Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy. And then, you know, I watch comedy shows like, um, I don't know if you've heard of Family Guy. I, mm-hmm. No, but I think Annette might have my daughter. I love that show. It's it's really funny, and uh, there there are a lot of choice words in it, but it's mostly it's mostly um it's really funny. Well, I always have to watch myself when I'm in here because time has decided to have a swear jar. Yeah. So if, if I say naughty words, then she charges me like 25 cents. Wow. <laughs> of course, I haven't had to send her a check yet. Or... But, but like I said, there's <laughs> um, choice words and some choice scenes. So, hmm. Well, the choice hmm. scenes, you're not seeing them. You're just hearing them and you can imagine. Is that the deal with that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta, we gotta get you censored there sometime. Of course, you're 19 years old. I guess you're getting of age. So yeah, you, you can do that kind of thing. And like I said, I don't really cuss. I mean, when I'm around my mom, I try not to cuss. So instead of the f word, I say squeaking. That's a good idea. Because I, I one time somebody said f you on 
TV. So I took my squeaky ball and said, like, I squeaked it and said, you. So, <laughs> squeak you. Uh-huh. I'm thinking of finishing it with some other choice words. Name <laughs> <laughs> on me. I should not encourage you to be and, bad. <laughs> and just recently, just last night, I downloaded a sensor beeper button. Um, and I can actually use it. What I have to do is just double tap the beeper and hold my finger down and it'll beep. <laughs> Good. <clears throat> but if you if you practice that beeping stuff, maybe you can learn to not even think about bad words. Oh, yeah. Good training device. I've had a lot of luck with that. <laughs> <clears throat> Colleen, shh. <laughs> I don't know how well it worked for me, but I'm 69 years old. <laughs> I have a lot of practice at being bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, you said to me you do puzzles. Now, this intrigued me, Sienna. <clears throat> What are your puzzles like that you do? Are there are they the ordinary puzzles like people who can see do? How many pieces are to each puzzle that you do, and are the pieces thick or oversized? Can you explain the puzzle to me? Actually, I have two of them at home that are like 100 pieces. Um, what I do is first I, I pretty much do the frame first. Like if the pieces don't fit, like I can – tell because like they don't go in or like if it fits and it's not the right piece maybe like the maybe it's uh maybe it's supposed to be wider or maybe you know it's um maybe it's more longer than the other piece should be so that's pretty much how I kind of figure it out and if it doesn't like fit like I said if it like won't connect then I know it's the wrong piece but if it connects and it's the same width or length as it's supposed to be then I know I got it right can I do right. a minute, minute absolutely a period I used, I used to do, to do a, a lot of jigs puzzles, puzzles. And, we and we had them, them laid, out laid out on, on the dining room table, table. I, remember I remember that, that. Yes. yes and there and was, there was one, piece one piece we, we just, just couldn't find and Sienna, and Sienna came, came over, over one, day, one day, and she, and she was, was playing, playing with the puzzle, puzzle, and found that and, and put it in. Put it in. <laughs> and we, and were like, we were like, how the hell did she do that? Do that? <laughs> I don't remember that. It was, it was oh, it's oh, been, it's a, been long a long time. time. <laughs> oh, man. Probably about <laughs> six, six or seven, seven years, years ago, ago, something, something like, that. like that. But, yeah. But, yeah. So we, 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 we were just we were like, like oh. 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 really? Oh my gosh! And, and, so, and there's, I want to bring, bring up the, the uh, when Sienna and, and, and I would take walks walk around, around the neighborhood. Around the neighborhood. neighborhood. Our, neighbor Our neighbor drove a school, drove a school bus. bus, and, and Sienna, Sienna could tell. tell oh, 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 that's a that's bus. a bus. I'm like, I'm like, how do you know? How do you know that? She said, I don't know. I just do. And, and I, I asked, asked her about, her about it, it oh, well, a little, little bit, ago. bit ago. Well, well weeks, weeks, months, months, I don't know. And she and said, said it was the echo, echo that her that boys and, and our sounds, sounds when we walk, walk with the with echo, the echo that, that she, she could hear that I could. I could. So yeah. that just, that just amazed, amazed me as well. Because I'm, I'm like, how does she, how does she do that? Yeah. So we talk so about... How her, How her senses, senses are much, are much more, more developed. developed. The ones the one that she had, she had are much, are much more, more developed, developed than, ours. than ours. And she was sharing with me her taste isn't. Right. right. She, she tastes, tastes, I think, I think it's sweet, sweet salty, salty, and maybe, and maybe, maybe heart. heart. Is that right? Is that right? Yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty much. much. And that's, and that's the only, the only thing she can taste. taste. She has she no has sense, sense of smell, smell whatsoever. whatsoever. I mean, I, I mean, I can taste. I, I can taste every food. I mean, and I can tell if it's spicy or not spicy, or if it has tomato sauce, or 
is yes. Wow. And she has no sense of smell? No. No. So if there was smoke in the house, you wouldn't smell it, Stan? No. Oh, that's dangerous. You have smoke detectors and... Yeah. 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 But if she was in a place that didn't, holy cow. Mm -hmm. Mm. See, I thought all the other senses would kick in. If you lose one sense, I was thinking the, all the other senses would kick in. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. Hmm. Um, speaking of eating, a lot of times we people who see don't understand <laughs> how blind people can live alone and they fix their own meals. How is it that you can pour things into glasses and cups without seeing and knowing when to stop so they don't overflow? And how can you tell where your food is on your plate? Um. Really, for the glasses, I use the finger technique, which is you put your finger in uh, the glass, and when you pour, like, water or milk or juice or anything into the cup, and when it touches your fingertip, that means stop. it's, yeah, it means stop. And for food, really, I just, I know this may sound a little too childish, but I use my, I kind of use my hands to kind of figure out where, where food is. Well, you got to figure it out some way. I'd use my hands. And okay. like what, and when I have to use a spoon, I just push it up with my hands on there or something. Yeah. <laughs> my kind of girl. <laughs> Skin is washable and God mm-hmm. made it that way. That's good. That's the way I look at it. Uh, let's see oh yeah we talked about a seeing eye dog because I was wondering if you'd ever want a seeing eye dog you want to talk about that and share that with the people um I would like to get a seeing eye dog so if I do live you know on my own but the only thing I won't be responsible for is cleaning up their (laughs) (laughs) doo-doo unless I have rubber gloves well, I, oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. If you can't see, oh yeah. <laughs> well, how would you know where to clean up the poo poo? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you can smell it, huh? right? <laughs> I can just see her butt in the air, nose on the ground, trying to sniff where the poops are. <laughs> Shame on me. <laughs> yeah. The dog would definitely have to come with a pooper scooper. Oh, yeah. And a poop, and a poop detector. Because detector. Yes. she can't, she can't smell, it. smell it. Oh, that's right, because she doesn't have to. Oh, my gosh, she'd be in a home. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. That takes care of the seeing eye dog. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Now, um, another question Mm -hmm. that seeing people have for blind people, Mm -hmm. how do you manage to get dressed? How do you put your outfits together, if you do? Uh, Really, I just pick out a pair of shorts or a pair of pants and a T-shirt or a long sleeve shirt. I don't really care if they match or not. Good for you. You're covered. That's what matters. Yeah. yeah. It's when um I was raising my kids there was a, one of my friends baby was born blind. Well, she wasn't born blind. She was put in an incubator. That's when they did the incubators and did not cover the baby's eyes. Oh. So she was blinded by the incubator light. Hmm. And so she hadn't seen since since birth, basically. But her mother had this system. Boy, her mother was amazing to me. Mm -hmm. She had this system where she would sew a different tag, different shape 
of a tag in each of the clothes that had the shape of a, a shirt and um, with a sleeve or without a sleeve. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. Somehow, <clears throat> Joy could find the clothes that matched each other through this tag system. Wow. And the colors would match together because of the way the tags were. I'm telling you, it was incredible. Mm-hmm. And and that's what I was wondering. Did you work anything out like that? But you have a good attitude the way you do yours. Uh, not really. You don't? You have a bad attitude? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, we didn't work anything out like that. Oh, right. No. Okay. Because <laughs> you just don't care. Right. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's a good attitude. You don't care. Yes. Okay. Um, how do you style your hair? Really just combing it and brushing it. The barber shop just really cuts it and highlights it for me. Beauty shop. The beauty shop. Sorry. So you tell them what kind of style you basically want, and I'm assuming you pick an easy style that all you have to do is brush and go. Yeah, pretty much. That's cool. I like those kind of hairstyles, and I can see. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> How she fills up, how she determines food. I'm trying to go through this list that I made for you. What's your That's okay. Uh, sure, puzzles. Oh, yeah, we never finished on the puzzles. Do you do special puzzles uh, that the pieces are thicker, or do you do puzzles like your mom and grandma did? Um, I really just do the uh, thicker pieces. So I don't, I'm, not, I'm not ready. For, I don't think I'm ready for, like, the small, tiny pieces yet. Yeah. <laughs> I can I can understand that. Uh, yeah. Oh, we didn't talk about your rap. How oh, you rap. You want to tell people about that? Yes, um it really got started um first when I was like 5 or 6, my stepmom's cousin Aaron taught me pretty much how to beatbox and for people out there that really don't know how to beatbox, it's pretty much, you know, Pretty much that. And then um, my friend Josh got me into, like, old school rap. And, you know, um, I like the old school rap better than the new school rap because all the new school rap talks about is drinking and drugs and killing and um, sex and all that. And, you know, that's not something really – and if I were a rapper, you know, my name is Killa C, for people out there that don't know the rappers. Um, uh, um, my rap name would be Killa C, and I'd probably, you know, talk about, like, being against that stuff. But at the same time, you know, I'm I'm going to make, like, reality rap, because um, not all my words are going to be mother effer this, mother effing that, son of a B this, GD at this. Oh, yeah, we that. get the picture, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to talk about all that and killing. I'm going to talk about, you know, memories of childhood and um, what it's like to be, maybe what it's like to be a rapper, what it's like to be anything um, that I could really bring up. I might, you know, if I ever made albums, I might make like a silly rap, one silly rap for each album, but pretty much I'd keep it real. Mm-hmm. That's good. And like I said, I'd probably just talk about, you know, getting down to the beat, dancing and, you know, childhood and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Things you can relate to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In good ways, I mean. Yes, I'm not going to be like one of those cussers. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, Let me see. Who taught you? How to make videos, and you want to explain how you do that, not being able to see? Of course. Um, What really inspired me, nobody really taught me to make videos. I taught myself, but really what inspired me is my friend Logan, who makes um, Facebook videos a lot. Is he blind? Yes, he is. Um, Okay. And, you know, I added him on Facebook, and um, he, I saw, like, two or three videos that he made. So 
I taught myself how to make live videos, and my first video is about my life. <clears throat> Pretty much from start to finish. So how do you get them from your head and your mouth to the Internet? I don't really use the Internet on this. I use Facebook, but really I just, you know, just think about what I'm going to say. Now, wait a minute. Isn't Facebook on the Internet? Oh, yeah. Duh. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. How do you get it to Facebook? Um, really, my phone will just tell me, you know, it'll tell me if I want to go live or not. It'll, it'll have, like, this button that says go live. Although so it says live. Yeah. <laughs> oh, live. <laughs> uh, so your phone, you just do it verbally through your phone that talks to you. Yes. How incredible is that? I, I need one of those things. Voiceover doesn't have a brain, though. That's good. <laughs> Don't get me going on the Lilu thing. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that Lilo thing is a it's a thing that can drive me nuts. It's your grandma can explain Lilo to you. That's a new thing we're talking about too. A new interest. Yes. Yes. Um when I listened to your uh to your thing song, I'm Alone. Uh huh. To me, you sounded to be very afraid and lonely and unwanted and unloved. And, and it kind of upset me to hear you, to hear what you were saying. And I just wanted to go and put my arms around you and say, you're, you're not alone. You're, you really, you're very loved. <laughs> um, if you could go somewhere, you'd feel safe and wanted and loved and with others. What would that be like? Where would it be? Who would be there? What would you do? Um, um, you know, I, I have to say, this song is dedicated to anyone who, you know, has, like, a hard time. It's really just about, you know, bad days, you know, where, um, and it's, like I said, it's dedicated to everyone. Um, it's about, you know, when you're having a bad day it just it's like a prison that you're locked inside of like you can't get out all the lights are out and um all the doors are locked and um actually I almost felt that way um just this Wednesday because um me and my mom got into an argument and um I said some things that I kind of shouldn't have said um it's it was kind of hard for me because um you know, this day was kind of, this week was kind of a, a bad week for me. Um, but what it's really about is, you know, um, I think a lot of people feel they're unloved and unwanted. And, you know, sometimes they kind of feel alone the same way. And you wanted to share there's other people out there that feel the same. Exactly. I'm sorry. It's okay. Hey, we um, all have days like that, believe it or not. And um, the places where I'd probably want to go, that's the reason why I moved to my mom's, because I used to live at my dad's, and I felt unwanted and kind of unloved there. Uh -huh. And um, it's it wasn't, it, I just felt like it wasn't happy there. But um, um, I moved to my mom's because I know she wanted me and loved me and wanted me. But if I didn't, you know, if I if I didn't have any parents who loved me or um, wanted me, I'd probably go up to Canada or maybe to L.A. <laughs> and do what? I guess, I don't know, just, I guess maybe live there or something. You'd have to do something to meet people. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I um... I know some people from Canada, actually. I talked to them on Facebook and on Skype, actually. Oh. Um, there's one that I talked to on Skype. His name's Trevor. He lives in Canada. And there's two people that I t uh, video or audio call on Facebook. Um, I know this. Uh, there's one guy I know by the name of Gibson. That's what I just call him. I just, I just call him as Gibson. Um, and then um, there's this guy 
who is originally from India. His name is Xerxes, and mm-hmm. he he lives actually in Canada now. I think he moved from India in 1995. I can't remember, though. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, wherever you go, you know, you'd have to go out and make friends. Yeah. I you'd know. have to interact with people. Definitely. <clears throat> um. And you know your grandma loves you. Yes. I just want to reiterate, you're not unloved. I know. And now you got all the people who are listening who love you. <clears throat> Debrielle says, blessing, Sienna, and she did a little heart for you. <laughs> so, see, people love you. I know. Um, I know that you're uh, very sensitive to spirit world. Oh, Yes. And uh, I don't know how to approach this. Uh, you don't talk to spirits like I talk to Dave, though, right? Um, you you have different spirit interaction than I do. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, I talk. Go I'm ahead. Sorry. I talk to people that are you know that are still alive and that are still on this earth right now. Um, there was one. There was one time I actually talked to someone um, that wasn't on the earth anymore. So that's how I feel it. Very interesting. If any of you have heard, any of you out there listening have heard of what Sienna just said, like talking to people. The only way I can say it is like telepathically, but she also feels these people. If any of you have experience out there with that, would you please contact me and exp- and, and talk with me about it and explain to me how this works? Because it's very new in my world. This is the first time I've ever heard of this. And, Go ahead. And for people out there that don't know, I used to call them princes because, <laughs> you know, I was more younger and immature, but now that I... I'm older. They're not princes. They're assistants because, you know, they'd always help me throughout times. Like, if I'm about to do something crazy when I'm angry, they'll tell me, you know, stop it. Don't do that. And if I'm angry and it's like 1 o'clock in the morning, they'll tell me to go to bed. But the reason why I just called them princes was because, you know, I was young and (laughs) I was still in that fairy tale world. But um, I think my first biggest obsession, and I used to have him as a Prince, you know, I used to talk to him, was Mark McGrath. And that was a big obsession. And it wouldn't let go of me. And, you know, I used to have a Mark McGrath doll that I used to, his name wasn't Mark McGrath for real, but it was a G.I. Joe. Yeah. Um, but I used to call it Mark McGrath. And I used to play with him. I used to, um, I used to sleep with him. I used to, um, uh, get take a shower with him, but then you know, I got so attached to him that then it it was time you know we had to limit the time with him. So I only had like two hours with him every other day. But then finally it was time to depart. So I'm like, you know what? I have to do this. So I took the doll and I threw it away. And I'm like, and I broke free of that obsession. And I'm like. It's it's kind of like I don't know if people if you people like if you guys go to church for the listeners out there it's kind of like the devil getting a hold of you and telling you what to do and what not to do so basically the t- the devil was telling me to have an, a a very big obsession for a whole bunch of years with Mark McGrath and do things with him. That a lot of people wouldn't do. But then, you know, after I threw it away, I told the devil, no, I am done. We are not going through this anymore. So I broke free of that obsession. That's very good, Sienna. I was very concerned when you were telling me that. But you didn't finish the story and tell me that you saw it the way you saw it. And you told them to leave you alone. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. That is such a relief to me because I'm sitting here thinking, oh, my God, what has she gotten into here? 
um, because I was thinking along the lines that you just said, and that scared me. And I didn't know what to do other right. than pray about it. Uh, so I'm glad you realized that. Mm-hmm. I, I really am, because I think it, what you said is exactly what was happening. One of the minions of the mm-hmm. devil was getting a hold of you and playing. Mm-hmm. And they can turn me. Yep. So you, you stay away from those spirits, okay? I do. <laughs> Thank you very much. I feel better about that. So, um, I think I asked you earlier, but of course I forgot. <clears throat> do you have a job that you're working currently? No, I do not. I'm still looking. <laughs> and what is it you're looking for? To well, right. a career? Um, Right now, I'm I'm hoping to work in the radio studio, but I haven't gotten any calls back from them because I just submitted an application for them. But I haven't gotten any return calls back. But I would really like to be a receptionist because, like I said, a lot of people are saying, you know, that I'm I sound very professional. So, you know, my backup plan right now is to maybe work at um, – a hospital and be like the receptionist at the front desk or something. Have you had any training in being a receptionist in that kind of an environment? Um, I've only been a receptionist at school for um, two hours, two days a week, and at another place for, for a whole day. So, I've, but I've never really worked at the hospital. Well, I'm thinking if you could get some kind of education in the blind world mm-hmm. to be a receptionist, they would help to place you in that kind of a job. I don't know if they have any places around you that could do that, though. I don't know either. <laughs> yeah, that'd be something you could research on your on your talking phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, she, well, she does, does through the employment office. office. There's, There's a, a vocational, vocational rehab, rehab thing, thing that, that, that they're working, they're working with, her with her now, now on, that. on that. Oh, that's wonderful. There you go. You keep pursuing that, Sienna. Thank you. You can do whatever you want to do. You just have to work at it. It's how I raised my kids. You can do whatever you want to do. You just have to work at Mm -hmm. it. And no matter what happens, I will love you. Thank you. (laughs) I tell my kids that, too. Um, What are your plans, other than in the job field like that, for, like, Five years down the road, what do you see yourself doing? Oh, my. Um, Where do you see yourself being? Yeah. Hopefully, um, out on my own. Maybe, you know, going to different states or different countries. But I'm going to try my best pretty much to stay in America, you know, because I don't want to go to Iraq and stuff. I think those are the bottom ones because I'm worried about war and stuff and you know I'm I'm not going to go to a place that's with war because I'm not going to get involved in it I'm not I'm not in for that but maybe you know besides touring the world and you know being a singer or a pianist or a rapper or actress or anything like that I want to be married to a blind to a blind boy who is you know independent you know, that can clean up for himself, do his own dishes, sweep his own house. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh, but I'd like to have a seeing guy that would do that. <laughs> oh, he could even be blind. I don't care. <laughs> we all want that, Sienna. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good goal, Sienna. <laughs> And maybe, maybe he's even, you know, been through the same challenge as me, you know? Yes. Yeah. That would be good. That would be wonderful, yeah. <clears throat> so we understand each other better. Yeah. Absolutely good goal. Yeah. 
But then there's always that question. How the heck do we meet that guy? Are there really any left in this world that are single looking for somebody like us? I have two boys on my mind that I really want. I mean, right now I have a boyfriend, but I don't know what's going to go on. But right now I have two people in my mind, my friend Josh, who taught me rap, and my friend Christian, who's uh, who loves country, but, you know, also has had relationship problems. <laughs> oh, well, be careful there. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing I always told my kids, time, if you're listening, plug your ears. <laughs> Use protection. Oh, yes. Don't ever think, oh, he'll take care of it. Mm-mm. You make sure he takes care of it. That's right. why they make condoms. Oh, yes. Okay, done with my motherly lecture here. Grandmotherly lecture here. <laughs> <laughs> Had to bring that out. You take care of yourself, girl. There's too much crap out there you can get. Oh, yes. And you can end up pregnant and you don't, you're not really ready to have a baby. I am never. <laughs> so be careful with that stuff. Okay, I asked you that. Yes. Taking, I'm looking through our notes. Now, did, did you find, did, do you have anything you specifically want to talk about that we didn't hit on? I don't know. I don't, not that I know of. So we covered all the bases you'd really like to share? Want to do a wrap for them? Oh, um, sh- I can maybe do like a, a little freestyle for you. Okay. <clears throat> this is really a verse from my um this is a verse from my song that I made up. It's called Childhood Memories. Every once in a while I dream about my childhood and when I wake up I feel very good. Sometimes I dream about my first steps program and when I wake up I think oh man I really want to see how those places have changed. I can think about them in many ways. When I have no work to do, I think about those dreams. I think about them because they're my childhood memories. Very nice. It seems you got the wrapping stuff down. (laughs) Yep. Very nice. Um, Matt just, just shared. She's one of the chatters in the chat room. Mm-hmm. There used to be a blind piano tuner here. His wife was also blind. They had three or four children that were all seeing. It was a cool wow. family to be around. Yeah. <laughs> used to work with his daughter and ran around with her in school. That's pretty cool. See, it can be done. <laughs> it has been done. Oh, I almost <laughs> I almost forgot about rap. Um, You know how a lot of people use like the the racist words and all that. Uh-huh. I I wouldn't use that. Like the N word, I would never use that in one of my raps because you know, there's a difference between the with the A and the E R. You never want to say them whatever way you say them because um instead of, you know, saying the N word, you could say homies or homeboys or friends or, you know. Mhm. It's not even homeboys is not acceptable anymore. It's a harsh sound in people's ears. Yeah. But that N word, oh no, don't yes. ever use the N word in front of me. Really, I think, what I'd say is homeboy or homies. I'm sorry, homies or friends or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'm glad you said that. Mm-hmm. I know someone who uses that word to this day. I a lot of people at my school used it. This is not right. Yeah. We were all put here by the same being. Mm-hmm. We're just put here in different colors and sizes and shapes. Just like puzzles, they come in different sizes, colors and shapes. Oh yes. They all fit together. So Don't be the dog that comes and takes the puzzle piece and eats it. (laughs) (laughs) My dad had a dog who used to do that. And it was a thing. It was a 
bad at one point where people were doing puzzles all the time. You walk in people's house, they got a puzzle on a table. It's just <laughs> the way it was. I, I yeah. grew up in, I was born in Toledo, Ohio. When I was in the third grade, my father got transferred to Indiana. We moved to Indiana. I was in Indiana until I got married in different cities, Markle, Indiana, South Bend, Indiana. And then when I got married, we moved up to Michigan. Wow. Lived in Lansing and raised the kids in Holt. We moved to a suburb of Lansing called Holt because they had the better school system. But my point <laughs> being, I'm a Midwesterner, and it seemed to be a Midwestern thing yeah. where we have puzzles. Because in the winter, it gets cold. And especially mm-hmm. living on the farm, you, you don't really have fields to go plow or, or to plant or or harvest. Or, you got to stay in the house. You just go out and milk the cows and feed the chicken, gather the eggs. Um, but you always had a puzzle going. Yeah, and we we sit around the table and play games with each other, Yahtzee, mm. euchre, and uh, card games. People don't have Southern people haven't heard of like euchre, right? <laughs> but uh, it was a good time. It was a really good time. I don't know why I got off on that bender. Mm. I have no idea why I did that. <laughs> <clears throat> um. It's time, it's getting close to time I need to draw another card in case it has a long explanation and I can't read it. I want to make sure I do these cards every show, beginning and end. Right. Don't go away because I'm sure I'll think of something else to ask you about. Don't run away, Sienna. Okay, angels, it's time to draw another mm-hmm. card for everybody. You all know who who's here, who's going to be here and all that stuff. Let's see. All right, we want this one, which is Choir of Ascended Angels, Higher Frequencies. Oh, oh, I think I'm going to love this one. What a way to end a show on higher frequency, because I don't allow the negativity to come in. If it comes in, then i got to know, okay, how can we fix that? There's a, there's a good place to be negative, and there's a bad place to be negative. Yeah. Very well said, Sienna. Very well and, said. I mean, there's a there's a place to, you know, cuss and be inappropriate. But other times, you know, there's not. Yeah. I can't think of a good place to be inappropriate and cuss. But right. okay. <laughs> I really can't. Let me get the magnifying glass out. I really can't read this book. <clears throat> oh, it really sucks to get old and start losing your eyesight. Let's see. Oh, Geez, it makes a world of difference. No, no, where's, I'm at the wrong, okay. Choir of Ascended Angels, Higher Frequencies. The Choir of Ascended Angels brings in the highest frequencies for our ascension process. Their pure notes and sounds are helping our souls integrate the new earth frequencies. There is a sacred healing scale of notes called the Solfeggio, S-O-L-F-E-G-G-I-O scale that the angels know of and operate on <clears throat> at the healing frequency of 528 HZ. I forgot what JP told me that is. The choir of ascended angels is asking you to surround yourself with harmonic sounds, harmonious sounds. Play uplifting music that makes your head happy. Spend time letting your heart be uplifted with music. They encourage you to listen to music you have never heard before. Be open and ask them to guide you to find new music to help you. Experience their energy. Give thanks as they lovingly guide you on your journey. That's a good one for you. It is. Yeah. See how how perfect the angels are. Mm-hmm. They know. They know the words that we need to hear at the times we need to hear them. The right, the perfect words. Oh yes. Do you do you feel angels around you, Sienna? Definitely. What do they feel like to 
to you? Um, when I need them, you know, they, they always give me, like, good advice. Um, like I said, um, like, my assistants, they're kind of like my assistants. They give me good advice when I need it, and that's pretty much how it is for me. When you're, do you ever sit outside and just be quiet and listen? Oh, yes. The places that I sit outside and be quiet, because my favorite places to sit outside are on swings. Like, swings that, like, like, swings that are, like, relaxing. Not the kinds that, you know, you can just go crazy on and swing high and high. But I mean, like, um, like, you know the swings that therapists have? No. Um, they're kind of like, um, what you call hammock swings. Um, oh. It's, it's not exactly a hammock. It's more of a, oh, um. A rope type it, swing with a seat? Yes. A, a what? Like your yard swing? Yeah, pretty much. You know, mm-hmm. Dolly, like the old time swings that... Older folks used to have in their yards. Yep, I know what you're talking about. She's got one of those, and she likes to mm. sit out there. Nice. When you do, what do you feel or hear? I feel relaxed, and I feel like I hear a lot of nature. That's why, you know, like when I go to bed sometimes and I can't sleep, mm-hmm. I have this um, Nature Sounds album that I listen to, and it was actually an album that, I had when I was a little kid, and I downloaded it on my phone. So I listen to it like when, like I can't sleep. And for a lot of people out there, don't make fun of me, but I downloaded baby songs too because actually, um, that rap that I did about my childhood memories, I have list. I've dreamed that I listened to like all the music that I listened to in preschool, uh-huh. and I and I looked up the music. And it was there, so I downloaded the whole album. Oh, I love those songs. I still hum them to myself and sing them. I like it. And it reminds me, I used to sing them to the kids when they were babies, and I love that memory. So that's, like I said, I know I know I sound like a child when I do that, but I downloaded baby music to remind myself of the childhood. Right. Uh, uh, that's beautiful. Well, I have to, it's come to the time, the end of the show, and I have to thank you, uh, Sienna, for coming on. And Colleen, thank you for sharing Sienna with us. Thank you so much for having me on. And um, I actually have a quote for everyone out there that doesn't know this. Okay. Life, life is like a peach, a big, gigantic peach. Um, when you take a bite of the sweet parts of the peach... They're good days or good parts of the day. But if you take a bite of the bitter peach, or the bitter parts of the peach, because, you know, sometimes you don't know what parts of the peach you're eating all the time. If, if you take a bite of the bitter parts of the peach, they're either bad times of the day or bad days in general. And then when you get to the pit, that means your life has ended. Oh, Wow. Well, what a way to end. Okay. <laughs> well, thank I, I'm, you. Not, I'm not trying to be disturbing. It's actually a really good quote. Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, thank you for sharing that. And thank you for coming on, Sienna. Thank you. <laughs> okay, then I will say adios to you all for now. I'll be talking to you Tuesday. <clears throat> love you all. Love you, Sienna. Colleen. Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you.